My name is William Justice, and we live in a 3D world. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create a customizable 3D text zoom animation using DaVinci Resolve and Fusion. First, we're gonna set the animation up manually, and then I'm gonna show you this new tool I've created called the 3D text zoom generator. It's on my website, buildjustice.com, and it's gonna let you set up the entire animation, completely customize it, and in just a few seconds, you'll have everything ready to go. I haven't really done a lot in 3D. This is my first time kind of really doing anything with it. So we're gonna start with the basics. We're gonna set up a 3D space and set up, move the objects around and kind of show how the basics work um, before I get into the tool. So I've been experimenting a lot with Fusion and I really wanted to see if I could create something that would generate an animation. So I wanted to try it on this 3D zoom project. Fortunately, Fusion files are really easy to manipulate and customize. If this works, I'll probably create some more generators for different kinds of animations. Before we jump into 3D, I really wanted to thank everybody for all their comments and feedback on my last video, Resolve Feud. I learned a lot putting that video together, and I wanted to recognize a few people that submitted some really great answers to my questions. Question one was about moving an object along a circle path. Both Fusion Cloner and CB Super came up with a great answer. Um, you should check out their channels. I put links in the description below. The option to create a circle path is a bit hidden, so I reached out to CB Super and he gave me all the steps. There's a lot that goes into it, it's really hidden, and he remembered exactly what to do and pointed me in the right direction. He has some great tools and tutorials, so you might want to check out his channel. Another question was about tracking the grid warp. Alex Muntean had a great solution, um, very interesting, and I'll probably be checking that out in my next video. Okay, this is very easy to do. We have a basic composition set up here with a background and a graphic going into a merge node. We're gonna click this polygon and drag that in. With the polygon selected, right click up in the viewer area and go down to where it says polygon one polyline and we're gonna hit create. And this is actually gonna create our path for us. We're gonna choose ellipse. We can set the size and click okay. And so basically we have an ellipse with the width and height set to the same, so it's a circle. So the trick here I got from CB Super, he helped me out a little bit. You right click here for shape animation and we're gonna remove the polygon one polyline from this. And then we just have to right click again and republish it and that's gonna make sure that we have all the points so that we can do our circle path. We're gonna click Merge One, right click on the center, and we're gonna choose Path, meaning that we're gonna use a path to set the position on the center. Click Modifiers, and right click down here, and choose Connect to Polygon One Line Value. And that connects this graphic to the circle that we created. And we want to uncheck the keyframe on displacement, and then we can use the displacement to animate the position. And if you need more rotations, you just set the displacement to a higher value. Okay, back to 3D. We're going to be creating a 3D space and putting objects in the space. And you got to, when you think about the space, we got the, the X, the Y, and the Z is how close and far away the object is from the camera. And that creates our space. 3D can be pretty intimidating. I know it was for me at first. Um, the best way to get past that is to set up a really simple 3D project, put some objects in the 3D space, and move, move them around, kind of get a feel for how it works, how to adjust the space, and set up a camera and understand how the camera movements work. And once you do it, it I, once I did it at least, it got, I got a lot more comfortable with it. I wanted to give you a super quick rapid fire introduction to 3D and DaVinci Resolve Fusion. This is gonna be really basic, just kind of focusing on how to get things into the 3D space and how to move things around and view it. I'm going to start by showing you the basics of how the 3D zoom works. Then I'm going to take you to my website and show you how we can use the text zoom generator that I set up to make the whole process a lot faster, especially when you're setting up complex animations with a lot of text. The basic 3D elements are over here on the right side of the Fusion toolbar. There's an image plane which lets you put a video or graphic into the 3D space. You can add a shape such as a sphere or cube. This is 3D text. This is the 3D merge node, which lets you take multiple elements and put them into the 3D space. There's a camera, which lets you change and customize how you're viewing the 3D elements. There's a spotlight, which we're not gonna use for this video. And there's the 3D render node, which takes the 3D environment in the 3D space and flattens it out and puts it in 2D so that you can mix it in with your other videos and generate your files. So let's start by adding some 3D text. So we just gotta take the 3D text and move that into the node area. We'll set the text. Now you'll notice that when we try to connect it up to the media out, it does not work. Let's take a look. So you'll see that the 3D text, we're gonna hit 3D, we'll hit one on the viewer, and media out, we'll hit two. The 3D text is in the 3D space. So to get a 3D space into the 2D and flatten it out, we need the 3D render node. So we'll take the 3D text into the render node and the render node into the media out. 
and you can see we have our 3D text there. So how do we navigate the 3D environment? It's pretty simple. There's only a few things you need to know. So this is our 3D environment right here. Let's learn how to navigate it. You can use the middle mouse wheel to scroll. And as you scroll in and out, that will zoom in and out of the 3D space. If you hold the middle mouse wheel down and drag, you can move the, the 3D space side to side and up and down. If you hold the Alt key with the middle mouse wheel, that allows you to rotate around and get different angles. So we can zoom in and you see we're behind the 3D text. If we want to get to the other side of it, we just hold Alt and the middle wheel and we can move around. So it's, this is something you have to play with. Just put some objects in 3D and move them around, move the space around so that you can get comfortable with how to navigate it. Now you notice these arrows here. These allow us to move the position of the element in 3D. The red one moves it on the x-axis, which is left and right. The green one moves it on the y-axis, which is up and down. And the blue one moves it on the z-axis, which is closer and further away. So we can pull it way, push it way back or put it a lot closer. That's how you move the, the objects. Now, you can do the same thing with the text node selected and hit this transform icon up here. And this allows it to move it on the x, y up and down, and z, which is going to be further away and closer. Um, sometimes I found these are a little bit easier, especially when you're doing fine positioning. Um, you can kind of get the numbers and kind of see where things are. So let's add in another 3D text element. We'll take the text and drag it in. So we set the text. Now we need to get it into the 3D space. We can't put it into the render node. We need a 3D merge node. So we're going to take the 3D merge and put that right in between the first text that we did in the render node and drag the 3D text into it. And you can see that we have, in our viewer, we have two texts. So let's put hit a 1 on the merge node. So you can see those are the two text objects that we put in. And we can take a look at them. You remember we moved the, 3D, the first 3D text backwards. So we'll take this new one, and we can move it forward a bit or backwards. And let's, let's drop it down a bit. So we're starting to get our text layering. Let's do one more, and we'll drop it into the merge node and we'll move its position a little bit. Let's put that one way, way in the back. So let's zoom out and kind of take a look. So we have, those are the text nodes that we have. And the view that we're getting is on the right. So if you want to change what the view is, that's where you use a camera. So with the merge selected, we're going to add, click the camera icon to add a camera. And you'll notice what happens is the output over here change and it's showing us what the camera is viewing. So let's take a look. So our camera is right at 0, 0, 0. We hit the transform on the camera. That means it's right in the center of the 3D space. The same thing for moving the text works for the camera. We can change the X position, and the camera will slide left and right. We can change the Y position, and it'll go up and down. And we can change the Z position, but we'll go forward and backwards. And you can see there, right, we're starting to get our fly through the text. Now, there's a ton of options. I'm not going to go into all the details, but with the camera selected, we can take the angle of view and widen it, make it bigger so that we see more of the 3D space. Or we can bring it down and narrow it, and this is going to be kind of like a zoom so that we're looking at less of the 3D space. Let's zoom out. And you see how our camera is located there. So we'll set it right about like that. That's fine. Um, a few, when you, other, in the transform, there's a few other options you can do. Just real quick, we can rotate the camera around. We can change its Y position, X position, and we can actually spin it, change it to the Z position. I'm not, we're not going to mess with many of those right now. And the same thing works with this little icon up here. When you, you can do the same rotations. When you click that, you can use these colored circles to rotate it around. This one gets confusing for me. Um, I get a problem where sometimes my camera gets lost and I have, a trouble, I have trouble getting the camera back to find the text. That's why it's better to just make um, small increments so you can make sure that you have the camera working exactly the way you want. So to do the fly-through animation, all we really need to do is go to the first frame, and we can take the camera. With the camera selected, we can just move the camera back and go forward and keyframe it and have the camera move forward. It works pretty good. Um, it's a ton of work, especially when you have a lot of text elements, and that's where the generator is really going to help us out. One other thing I did for the generator is I took the text node and it's supposed to create a new text node. I created an instance. So to create an instance, you can select a node, hit Control-C, click off of it, and you hit Shift-Control-V. 
And that green line means that you have te a text instance. And we're going to put that into the merge node. And let's move it around here real quick. What we need to do is for the translation property, we need to deinstance that group. And that means that we're going to be able to move this text independent of what it was copied from. Now, the nice thing about having the instance is when we change one thing, it changes in both. So if we wanted to change the color, you notice both turned blue. Same thing if we wanted to change the font. The fonts change. So in the generator, all of the text elements are going to be based off an instance so that we can custom easily customize everything that's in there. OK, now I want to show you the 3D text zoom generator that I created. It's on my website, buildjustice.com. It's super experimental. I just set it up the other day, and it really I really haven't done a lot of testing with it. I'm hoping it's going to work, and that's where I could definitely use your feedback. If you're interested in it, try it out and let me know how it works. Hopefully, it's easy to use, so let's check it out. Go to buildjustice.com to find the text zoom generator. Um, I also have uh, my bullet list and a few other things I've done. I'm going to be adding more to this as I'm do doing tutorials and creating new fusion animations. So let's click uh, text zoom generator. I've been looking for an opportunity to generate fusion animations for a while. I've known that this was possible. I just wanted to find the right type of animation to generate, and I'm looking forward to maybe doing this for a lot of other kind of animations. Definitely try this out and let me know what you think. If you use it, I'd really appreciate a mention on YouTube, a link, something like that. It's not necessary, uh, not required at all, but definitely would be appreciated. I mean, also let me know where you use it and how everything worked for you. I'd really like to know. Okay, let's get in and create an animation. First step is to enter one word or phrase per line over here in this text area. Okay, now that we have all our words entered, all we need to do is hit Generate Download Fusion Animation, and that's gonna create the whole thing for us, and we're gonna drop it right in. So let's click the button, and you can see we have a download file right here, and let's, oh, let's open that up, put it in Fusion. Here we have a blank Fusion composition, and I found the file on my computer, this is the file that we downloaded. All we need to do to get it into Fusion is pick up the file and drop it into the node area. And we have our animation. You can see that it's set up here. We have a, our media out, so I'll hit two so that we can see what the media out looks like. We have a merge. This is a background here, so you can change the background color or set it to transparent if you'd like. This is our render 3D and our merge 3D. Now going into the merge 3D is we have all of these text instances. The reason I set this up as an instance is so that we can customize our text. Okay, let's play the animation and see what it looks like first. Now, if we want to customize the text, this is this text 3D node. So all of these instances right here are coming off of this. So we can adjust the color, for instance. Or maybe we want to adjust the font. And we can, that's, that's, how, that's how easy it is to customize the animation. So uh, let me just show you what the 3D space looks like on this super quick. We'll hit, uh, hit 1, and that'll put the camera in this viewer here. So you can see we have a camera, and it moves around in the 3D space and zooms in and out between each of the words. So the generator actually animates the camera and moves it around, setting keyframes on the camera. You can see all our keyframes here. Okay, let's go back to the generator, and I'll show you the different options and different types of animations that we can create. Okay, let's get in and check and see what the different options are that we can do with this thing. Um, I tried to document everything down here so you can use that as a reference if you're not quite sure what each of the settings does. Um, and also remember, this is really experimental. It hasn't been used by a lot of people. So if you have problems with it or it works, please let me know because I'm really not sure what's going to happen here. Okay, so let's just check out the different animation settings. The first one that we did that I just showed you is the random word zoom, where it zooms in and out between each of the different words in the 3D space. Word zoom in, word zoom out, and we have just a regular fly through all the words. So let's go through the options here. The random word zoom, we can choose to rotate the words on or off. That'll take randomly take some of the words and rotate them 90 degrees. Zoom frames is the amount of time it zooms from one word to the next. So a longer, a bigger number here will be a slower zoom into the next word. Wait frames is how long it waits after zooming into a word. Wait distance is the distance from the word to the camera. So if you want the word smaller, you pull the camera back a little bit, or if the words are too small, you can move the camera closer. Duplicates, this will actually create duplicates. So in this case, if we set it to 10, 
it'll create 10 duplicates of each of these words. So there'll be 10 resolves, 10 fusions, and that'll kind of fill in and put a lot more words inside the animation. X, Y, and Z ranges, that's how big the 3D space is. So if you want the words a lot tighter, you bring those ranges down and all the words will be a lot closer to each other because they're actually being randomly spaced out by the generator. So for the zoom in and zoom out, we just have the word spacing. And this is how far each of the words are from each other in the animation. So if you want the words closer together, you make that word spacing smaller. For the fly through words, um, we can set duplicates, X range and Y, and then we can also set the time. And this is the, the number of frames that the camera goes from farthest out to all the way through the animation. So anyway, I hope you get, can give this a try. I hope uh, you can find something interesting to do with it. If you do, please let me know. I um, hope you enjoy it. Also, any bugs, please let me know. Or any other ideas for animations that I could generate, let me know. I'd be uh, interested to, for the challenge to see if I could do it. There may be a better way to set up this type of animation, um, but obviously if you have a lot of elements in there and a lot of camera movements, it could be pretty complex to set it up. So that's where I'm, ho that's where I'm hoping that uh, the 3D generator is definitely gonna help out and get you a jump start on getting this animation set up. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel and like this video. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, or ideas for fusion animations that might be able to use a generator like this, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.